Hello and welcome back to Aviation Navy. Go where you feel the most alive. Today we'll be talking about apron markings with the help of the ACI's Apron Markings and Sign Handbook. This handbook complements the ICAO NX14 and the ICAO Aerodrome Design Manual to define the specifications and best practices related to apron markings. And today, with the help of this manual, we will be digging deep into the subject of apron markings. So without any delay, let's get started. First things first, what is an apron? As in the image on the right side of your screen, an apron is a defined area on land aerodrome intended to accommodate aircraft for purposes of embarkation or disembarkation of passengers, loading and unloading of mail or cargo, fueling, parking or minor maintenance. So with this, we will go on to understand apron markings. In order to understand apron markings, let us consider a situation where an aircraft lands on the runway and exits the runway through a taxi and now is instructed to get parked on a particular stand. What are the markings that the pilot of the aircraft should follow? With this, we will start with the first marking that is the stand leading line. These are the lines which basically provide a continuation of the taxiway center lines. So let us consider that an aircraft has landed on this runway, exits through this taxiway, and after exiting through this taxiway, it has to follow the stand leading lines that directs the aircraft to particular stands. The function of the stand leading line is to allow the aircraft to taxi under its own power or be towed to a particular aircraft stand safely while maintaining clearances from other obstacles. The marking should have a yellow color and may sometimes have a black border in order to create contrast in case the apron is of concrete. As for NX-14, these markings should have a width of not less than 15 cm but as per ACI, the width should be 20 cm and the border of this marking which is black in color should have a width of 10 cm. Now let us understand the markings for a mass stand. When aircraft stands are superimposed to accommodate two narrow body or one wide body aircraft at a time, then the stand is basically a mass stand or the multiple aircraft ramp system. And, as per ICAO Aerodrome Design Manual, a broken line must be used to distinguish the leading line of a narrow-body aircraft from the leading line of the wide-body aircraft. As you can see in the image, the leading line for the wide-body aircraft is a continuous line and that for a narrow-body aircraft is a broken line on either side of the line for the wide-body aircraft. Now, this line as per ACI's handbook should have a width of 20 cm same as the leading line of the wide body aircraft. The border of this leading line can have a width of 10 cm and the length of each dash should be of 2 meters with a spacing of 2 meters. Now let us understand some of the information markings and we will start with the maximum wingspan mark. This is nothing but an information marking and as for a cow NX14, this marking should be located on the surface of a taxiway or taxiway central line to indicate to the crew of the correct line that they must follow based on the specifications of the aircraft they are obtaining. And the specification of the inscription and the borders is given in this table here. Now, in this image you might wonder that why is the leading line in orange and in blue as you can see here while one of the leading line is yellow as you can see here. Well this is because as per the best practices at many airports, the color coding of the center lines along with the maximum wingspan marking have guaranteed safe operations and they provide enhanced guidance to the pilots that they are to follow a particular line based on the maximum wingspan. Color coding enhances safety of aircraft operations on the air by providing enhanced visual guidance. After following the stand leading line, the pilot comes across the stand direction marking and the stand location marking. The stand direction marking has a yellow background with a black inscription. 
while the stand location marking has a black background with yellow inscription, the specification of which is given in this table. The direction marking basically directs the pilot of the aircraft to move along the direction of this arrow. Another type of marking to specify direction to a particular stand may be as in the image here where the background itself is shaped in such a way that it forms an arrow. So the stand identification marking has the specifications as in the table here and this marking is present at the end of the leading line of that particular stand to identify the name or the numbering of that particular stand. So at the end of the stand leading line there is an aircraft stop line which indicates the stopping position for that particular aircraft and this stop line is marked taking into consideration the most demanding aircraft. The length of the stop line varies depending on the code of the aircraft stand. For code C it is 11 meters in length and for code D and E it is 16 meters in length as you can see here. Along with this aircraft stop line there is also a stop marking which has the specifications as in this table here. Now if an aircraft stand is used by multiple types of aircraft, it is obvious that the stop position for a particular aircraft will vary depending on the specification of the aircraft because the obstacle clearance for each type of aircraft is different. So in order to avoid ambiguity, the stop line can also be supplemented with the type of aircraft that particular stop line is. For example, this stop line is for an aircraft of Boeing 737 type and this stop line is for an aircraft of Boeing 747 type. So as you can see, the image on your left and right is different. This is because this is the marking that is to be used in case the aircraft stand is being used for docking of aircraft without a marshaller and this is the marking that is to be used in case the aircraft stand is being used to dock an aircraft with the help of a marshaller. Now let us look into the stand safety line. This line is red in color and this is the line that depicts the area that must remain free of staff, vehicle and equipment when an aircraft is being taxied in or is being towed into the position or has its engine on and is prepared for departure. Once the engine have been shut down and the area is safe, the vehicles may cross this line for servicing the aircraft. And the size of this area depends on the type of aircraft that is using this stand. The area is dimensioned in such a way so as to allow safe zoom around the jet engine intakes. This is mentioned by the aircraft manufacturer. The dimensions of this marking is that it should be aligned with 20 cm of width and may be bordered to increase contrast with a white painting having a border of 10 cm on each side. This image here will help you understand the apron markings. So as we discussed, this is the stand leading line. This is the aircraft stand location marking. The green line here depicts the underground fueling lines that may be present and the marking here represents the fueling vents that are present for the fueling the aircraft using hydrants. This area here that is given is the restricted standby area or the equipment staging area where the equipment for servicing the aircraft will be placed while the aircraft is taxing in into the position. Only after the engines are shut down, the equipment of the vehicle may cross this line that is the stand safety line and proceed for servicing the aircraft. This road that is present here is the service road for the movement of vehicles on the apron and this marking here is the vehicle stop line where the vehicle must stop and look for any incoming aircraft before it proceeds further. Now let us look into some other markings that you can spot at an apron. In case a service road that we saw in the previous image crosses an active taxiway or an aircraft stand taxiway. In that case, the service road edge marking should have a pattern like this and it also should have a vehicle stop line where the vehicles must stop and look for any happening aircraft movement before they proceed forward. 
Another type of marking that you can spot at an apron is the pedestrian crossing that can be used for the staff to cross a service loop. The marking that is present at the edge of the apron is the apron edge marking and it is typically two yellow stripes of 15 cm as you can see in the image here. Another marking that you can spot at an apron is the tractor pushback line and the pushback limit line. This marking has a width of 10 cm and is white in color so as to be sufficiently visible to the tractor driver and avoid ambiguity to the pilot of an aircraft. This is the line that the pushback tractor driver follows in order to maneuver the aircraft safely from any obstacle that may be present nearby or on stands adjacent to this line. Another type of marking can be the equipment parking line which is used to stage various equipments on the apron safe from any other obstacle nearby. The other type of marking you spot at an apron is the no parking area which is marked by red border and red hashes about 15 cm in length and spaced about 0.5 to 1 meter in length. This is the area that is to be maintained free from any vehicle or equipment. A similar kind of marking can also be found under the aero bridge. This area should also be maintained free from any vehicle or equipment in order to ensure safe maneuvering of the aero bridge wheel. And this is the position where the aero bridge wheel is parked when the aero bridge is retracted. I hope we are clear with all the apron markings that you can find at any apron. If there are any additional markings that you can spot at your aerodrome, Please let us know in the comments below. You can also visit our website aviationavi.com and connect with us on LinkedIn, the link of which is given in the description. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation. Thank you. This is Anvesha Pal signing off.